Hi, I'm Laurie and I'm a puppeteer. So for my job, I get to work with all different kinds of puppets. Some are glove puppets, some have rods, some are shadow, some are string puppets, anything at all. Before lockdown, I was working on a show called Fragments and we were using shadow puppetry to help stitch together a really old story, parts of which had been lost. Then the lockdown happened and I had to start staying at home, like I'm sure many of you did as well. But as I was at home, I started thinking about how everyday, sometimes boring objects might make great puppets, like a teddy bear, for example, or a tin can, or even a flip-flop. They all have different qualities. So some are quite soft and flexible. Uh, some objects can make a noise or even move on their own. And some of them you can actually move and change the shape of, turning it into something completely different. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can turn everyday objects into puppets. And you're going to need to find some objects in your own home. So you're gonna to need to go on a little hunt and see what you can find. See if you can get a load of different stuff. It doesn't matter uh, how weird it is or how different all of the objects are. So you can pause the video now and see what you can find. What did you find? What was the most interesting object that you found? You can tell me about it in the comments. Do you want to see what I found? So, when we're playing with objects, they can give us clues as to what kind of character they're going to become. So, with this tin can, I'm gonna really examine it and think about what it looks like, what it feels like, whether it makes a noise, whether it has a smell, uh, and in what different ways it can move. It doesn't really squish, but it can move on its own, or I can help it move. But right now, I would like to think about an ancient Greek myth. The show I was working on before lockdown was all about an ancient Greek story. Uh, so I've been reading lots of Greek myths, and there's one that really stands out to me, the myth of Danai. Danai's story is all about isolation and being locked up, and it's a little bit like how I felt at the beginning of lockdown. Now, Danai was a princess of Argos. She was happy. She lived in a splendid palace with her father, but was sometimes lonely because she was an only child. So, what can I choose to play the part of Danai? Ah, maybe this. It's a little bit sharp and a bit noisy as well. I'm not sure it's quite right for Danai. Ah, maybe this fan. You can almost start to imagine that there's limbs, arms and legs. quite flamboyant, a little bit too over the top for Danai. I think she's a bit more down to earth. I'm going to use this cloth. I can shape it to show where Danai's face is. And I'm going to start with three things that I think are really helpful when we're turning objects into puppets. Breath, focus, and weight. So I'm gonna start by sharing my breath with my puppet. And you can see when I breathe, it makes my chest expand and contract makes my shoulder move, my breath goes all the way down my arm, into my hand, and into my puppet. 
and that brings her to life. And depending on how she's feeling, her breath might change. Now I'm thinking about giving her focus. So my focus as a puppeteer is gonna be on the back of my puppet's head. Because if I start moving her around like this, my face is much more animated than hers is. And you're just gonna be distracted looking at me. So I'm gonna concentrate on my puppet. And hopefully she will then become the more interesting thing. And she might want to go and look at something over here. I'm gonna exaggerate it slightly, just so you can really see what she's looking at and maybe what she's thinking about. And then she might want to travel. I might need to think about how she's gonna move around my stage. So I'm gonna give her weight or the illusion of weight. The cloth is actually really light, but I want to make it look like she's walking like a human. And when we walk, we have to shift our weight a little bit from side to side. So I'm gonna see if I can do that a little bit with my puppet. For some puppets, they might be fantastical creatures and you might want them to fly through the air. But with Danai, I'm gonna try and keep it as human as possible. So if she wants to jump up onto something, she's gonna look at it first. She's gonna make that decision. She's gonna prepare. And then when she jumps, she needs to land again at the end. So, see if you can choose one of your objects to play the part of Princess Danai. Think about those three things, breath, focus, and weight. And just have a little play around. See if you can bring your puppet to life. You can pause the video now and have a go. Next, I need to choose an object to play the part of King Acrisius. Now, this being thousands of years ago, the king thought he could only give his throne to a son, not a daughter. So he went to the oracle for help. And the oracle told him that he would never have a son, but he would have a grandson. But unfortunately, that grandson would grow up to kill the king. Now, the king is not happy about this at all. In fact, he's a very selfish king and he's angry and scared. I'm going to choose this hammer to play the king. It's cold, it's hard, and it's heavy, just like him. And I'm gonna start with those three useful points we talked about earlier. Breath, focus, and weight. Now the hammer has a really useful shape. It looks to me like the king has a really big nose and slick back hair, which is really good for his focus. So I can make it really obvious what he's looking at. And every time he moves his head, it's like he's having a new thought. I wonder what it's like if we give the king a voice. Now you can try any voice you like. Is it gonna be a deep voice, a croaky voice? Does he talk really fast or really slow? Oh, 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 oh I can't believe it. That Danai, how, what am I going to do? I, uh, I, no, uh, must think of something. Uh, hmm, what can I do? The oracle must be wrong. This cannot be. <sighs> so, the king comes up with a plan. He's going to lock Danai in an underground chamber to make sure that she can never have a son to grow up and kill him. I wonder what happens when we bring the two characters in together. How can I show, maybe even with no words at all, that the king is threatening Danai? And 
what if she tries to fight back? <sighs> Have a play around with your two objects and see the different ways they can interact. Think about the body language. How can I show the emotions that the two different characters are feeling? But in ancient Greece, a prophecy can't be stopped that easily. Zeus, the king of the gods, visits Danai in the chamber in the form of golden rain and gives her a baby. That baby is called Perseus. So, I'm going to choose this. Remember, breath, focus and weight. I'm going to see how my Danai puppet is going to treat baby Perseus. You can try it too. Choose something to be the baby and then see if they can play together. You can pause it now if you want to experiment. I'm going to have a go. <laughs> when King Acrisius finds out that Danai has had a baby son, he is furious. Let's have a look at that moment when he finds out. The king locks Danai and Perseus in a chest and sends them out to sea. Now everything we've been doing so far has happened down on the ground. But now that we're in the sea, I'm going to lift it up a little bit higher so I can think about the movement of the water. <sighs> Meanwhile, on an island nearby, some fishing folk are busy at work. Now for this, I need uh, something to show lots of characters at the same time. So I'm going to use my fingers, but I'm going to dress them up a little bit. One of the fishing folk invite Danai and Perseus into his home. So Danai has somewhere safe to bring up Perseus, and she's never bothered by the king again. So, I've used a range of objects to bring this story to life. And you can do the same with any object and any story at all. Now, turning objects into puppets is fun, but making a puppet is also fun. And if you watch my next video, I'm going to show you how to make an ancient Greek monster puppet. And if you want to take this even further, you can watch my friend Jess's video. She's going to show you how to make some amazing shadowy backgrounds. 
And I would love to see the puppets that you've made as well. So please send us pictures. You can email them or you can tweet them and we'll put them on the Potential Difference website. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Oh, wee!